What's going on, y'all? Thanks for checking in the Cali's Take. You know what to do. Hit that like, subscribe button. Also hit that notification bell just so you can get the newest and the bonus content first. But hey, let's just go ahead and jump right in. You know, it's no secret that the Clippers have been an amazing team. It's no secret that they have been, you know, a team that a lot of people can look at and revere in the way of how you play even without all your players there and continue to fight every night and understand that every game counts the same with or without your superstars and you still have to play at a high level as much as you can. They're definitely the epitome of that and they're definitely a team that a lot of people should respect just based upon that because they've definitely shown it. And, you know, here lately, um, everybody knows, you know, they've been winning fairly well you know lately they've been doing a very good job Ty Lue has been doing a lot of good things and even though they have been doing that they still have doubters and one of their players you know has a response to all Clippers doubters and you know one of the players that actually you know made this comment in regards to the doubters that they have is one of their young guys and Terrence Mann Terrence Mann speaks on you know, how they were looked at or viewed upon as basically nothing when they, when everybody heard that Kawhi and PG was out, you know what I'm saying? Or Kawhi was out and then PG followed, you know, in the middle of this uh, late this season in December, he goes out. Everybody just responded as in like, oh, the Clippers are nowhere near where they should be. They're they're um, not as not as a good team. And basically, Terrence Mann was saying that everybody wrote them off too early. And I have to give Terrence Mann credit on that because he basically is saying the truth. Nothing other than that. I mean, because a lot of people had doubts about this team. A lot of people definitely looked at this team as like going under. And I can remember even Charles Barkley in the early, in the early part of the season, you know, when they spoke on uh, the Clippers on TNT, it was maybe the first month or two in the season. And, you know, Charles Barkley made a statement saying that he wonders where the Clippers are going to be, you know what I'm saying, in regards to like playoff, things like that until Kawhi Leonard comes back and, you know, all those type things. And, you know, the Clippers were going through, you know, COVID and injuries and stuff like that at the time as well too and hearing that statement way back then looking at the Clippers now it, it, it's, it's all come to fruition in regards to like where they're going to be because the because basically from what we see right now they're a playing team playing tournament team until otherwise because really as I said in my other videos, they're only a few games back from the sixth seed. And the way they're playing right now, if they can continue playing the way they are and continue relying on their defense, which is their anchor as a team, as a unit, and collectively score, and Ty Lue keeps that bug in their ear in regards to like giving them the confidence that they can go out there and beat any team they play, whether Kawhi or PG is on the floor or not, they can actually end up in the playoffs. And I guarantee you, if they end up in that sixth seed and find a way to secure a playoff spot without Kawhi and PG, that would say a lot about this team. And that would say to everybody, this team is for real, because if they ever do get those two players with the young core that they have and the veterans guys that they have, they still got good enough core to win a championship. They really do. And when you look at this team from afar, you wouldn't say that by looking at the roster, but they got some dogs on defense still. They still got Marcus Morris who, who gets physical. Terrence Mann is physical on defense. They still got Nicholas Batum who can guard one through five. And now they just added Robert Covington, you know, there. And then, you know, you add Norman Powell. He plays defense and could drop big numbers. Kawhi and PG on the perimeter when they're healthy. Hey, if Zubak can continue to play and get better along with Hardenstein, I mean, well, you got a championship caliber type team. You know what I'm saying? You really do because they got a lot of versatility and they got a lot of different ways of throwing, uh, you know, coming at you. They got a lot of different weapons. You know what I'm saying? That's why it's hard to beat the Clippers or the Clippers just never are out of any game you watch. 
whether they're down 20, 25 points, because you never really know who's going to step up that night and show that they can go out there and carry the team and play on that level. I mean, sometimes it's, of course, Reggie Jackson's been balling. Got to give Action Jackson some credit. Of course, you know, then it's Marcus Morris at times. Then you might have Luke Kennard go out there and, and show his, you know, his skills as well, you know, along with Terrence Mann, you know what I'm saying? Then the, the surprise on the team that nobody even knew about, uh, Amir Coffey. This dude comes out of nowhere and have big several big games this season that kept them afloat, kept them alive in the uh, play-in tournament. You know, when he was putting up 20-plus points for several straight games, you know, when you look at things like that, it's almost like Ty Lue is pulling the right strings on these players, and they're definitely responding in the way that he wants them to and in the way that they should to become a better player, and that's what they're doing. And as I said before, without Kawhi and PG, it's almost like a blessing in disguise for this team because it allows those younger players to develop. It's allowing those younger players to get experience. And what better teacher than experience you can sit there and read a book all you want but until you actually go out there and go do it and live it and be it and be in the moment of it the experience definitely overrides everything else and that's exactly what a lot of these young players are getting and so when Terrence Mann spoke on the fact that a lot of people wrote them off too early he was definitely 100% spot on based upon what we're seeing this team is seven and one or six and one in their last uh seven games and they're on the way to playing a Lakers team tonight that is beatable, of course, that they've already beat three straight times. And, you know, they're looking to keep the trend going. And, you know, the, like I said, if they can just rely on their defense and, you know, do it by committee on offense, you know, and keep it going that way, that's what's been working for them. And it's been working at a high level for them. And the way Ty Lue has been able to keep this ship together, even though it was supposed to sink like the Titanic, it didn't. And they're still afloat and they're still riding. They're still moving. You know, they're still going forward. And that's what a lot of people can't seem to understand. And a lot of the Clippers doubters don't want to admit it and they don't want to give them the credit. And I understand that because they're doubters for a reason. They, they scrutinize this team for a reason. They, they you know, what I'm saying they, they hate this team for a reason, you know, and I definitely understand that. But when you look at basketball and see how basketball is supposed to be played and how a team game is supposed to be played and how a team is supposed to you know get together with unity and build as they keep going forward while trying to play hard every night and win that's what the Clippers are the Clippers are that type of team which everything I just say equals up to next man mentality so the next man up yeah one man may be down, but the next man that's called upon to go out there, he's supposed to go out there and produce. And that's the way Ty Lu trains his guys to be, which is one reason why Ty Lu has won a championship as a coach one time before, even with LeBron James in Cleveland, because Le Ty Lu is a leader type coach. He isn't one of those player friendly type coaches. He I mean, he can be player friendly, but he's a leader type. He's the type that will put you in position to be at your best, even though you might not feel like you're going to play your best he's still going to put you in that position because he shows faith in you he shows trust in you and he's trusting that you'll go out there and execute the plan if he calls your number and that trust and that chemistry that he builds with his players and that respect that he gets from his players and that he gives back allows them to understand his process a lot easier and allows them to play more with comfortability and it allows them to go out there and play more freely and when you're going out there playing freely with no pressure in your mind just going out there trying to execute everything we talked about and just playing with an open mind it makes you play better at times than you would if you're uptight and got more pressure on you of course so I feel like with Ty Lue implementing those type of things to the players, it makes them more comfortable in their own skin going out there playing against a LeBron, playing against a Russell Westbrook, a Kevin Durant, or a Jokic, or a Joel Embiid, or anybody you can think of, because all the people I just named, they've knocked all of them off. They've beaten the Lakers. They came back from, I think, a 20-point lead against the Nets and beat them with James Harden at the time. They've beaten, um, they came back from a 20-plus point lead, I think, against Phil 
Philly came back and beat Joel Embiid, the possible MVP of this year. They've beaten Jokic, the reigning MVP of last year, down 25 points. And, you know, they've beaten the Lakers three times this season. So when you look at this team, they're really, really well put together and they're really, really coached really, really well. The only other team I would say that's coached as good as this one or a coach I would put up there with Ty Lue in my mind, I would put Eric Sposter up there for the uh, Miami Heat. He's a great minded coach, too. I definitely like to give him credit because he's definitely one of those great minds and gets respect from the players and get the best out of players, too. But, you know, as far as the Clippers being rolled off too early, they were. And I feel like that's something they use as motivation to push them forward, to propel them where they are now, even though they still got a long way to go, even though they still have other goals to look forward to and to try to accomplish. But what they've been doing so far has been very good and it's been very, very surprising to a lot of people, including myself, if I might say so. I mean, I'm just going to, you know, continue to see how it goes and hopefully they can continue to just ride the wave of success that they have and, you know, hope that Kawhi and PG walk through the those doors soon and ready to put the ball on the floor and go out there and uh, maybe possibly hey maybe possibly win a championship but hey that's my take on everything you leave any comments in the comment section as always and uh hey Cali out